the gravity of the gospel. A couple of weeks ago, Deacon Jackson, um, we introduced um, this text dealing with the gravity of the gospel. It, it was Paul's intent, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, to share with this young church at Thessalonica the significance or rather the gravity of the gospel because he too had been transformed by the gospel and he had witnessed the transformation of countless others through the power of this gospel. I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know who I'm talking to, but maybe I need to remind you, uh, brothers and sisters, um, the, the saved as well as the unsaved can tell that we are in the midst of some dark days. Yeah, but I do need to remind all of us that even though we are in the midst of dark days, that we have a resource that this world can't match or destroy. We, we, we have, yeah, the truth of God's word. And in particular, we have the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, the world um, um, and and, and all of its challenges can't match what the Lord has done for us and will do for us if only we would hold on to his unchanging hand. The word has not lost its power to convict, to save, and to correct. The Bible is not a, a book that is outdated or obsolete. It is current and relevant. Uh, to everyone every day. The Bible is more up to date and accurate Deacon William than the Miami Herald or the New York Times. God's word will stand when all else is gone. So allow me, if you will, to continue this message concerning the unchanging truth of the power of the gospel. And I want to continue my argument, if you will, to enlighten us on the gravity of the gospel. Let's, let's take a moment to refresh on what we discovered a few weeks back. First of all, we noticed the certification of the gospel in verse number five. The Bible read or reads, for our gospel did not come to you in word only. It, it was certified. It was proven to be certifiable because of, of its delivery. Uh, the text says, for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power. Are y'all following with me? It, it's certifiable because of, of its dianism uh, in that it did not come in, in to you in word only, but it also came to you in power. It has uh, dynamite power. Listen, and it was certifiable because um, it's of its design, this design um, not only of uh, of uh, not not one of us rather are worthy to carry the gospel but because God's design for our lives even though we haven't done everything we were supposed to do we are not doing everything we're supposed to be does not matter what our past has dictated in the past what, what, what our future may even hold for us but because God chose to use us in spite of what he knows about us it is by his sovereign design that he, he we are certified to do the will of God. But then we also discovered that uh, the, the, the compliance of the gospel in verse number six because of its certification. Listen, because this young fledging church introduced the gravity of the gospel, uh, they fell in line with his doctrine. They fell in line with his teaching. How do you know that? We notice that because of their conversion. The Bible says in verse number seven, and you became followers of us and of the Lord. We, we see compliance in their commitment as well, having Receive the word in much affliction. And then we notice compliance because of, of the consolation with, with joy of uh, the Holy Spirit. So let's, I hold you too long. Let me pick up where we left off from last week. We, we, we talked about the circle, uh, the certification. We talked uh, about the, the compliance today. I, I want to pick up in verse number eight and talk about the circulation of the gospel. 
That's what I, I, I want you to see today. I, I, uh, the first thing is the circulation. It's in verse number eight. I try my best to preach Bible rather than Benjamin. Can I show it to you if you haven't closed your Bibles already? The text says, for from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Archia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything. Look at this circulation. The gospel circulated through the efforts of uh, the church at Thessalonica. Um, pay attention um, um, to this circulation process. Notice how it was, first of all, administered. Uh, the church there, the Bible says, uh, sounded for them the gospel of Jesus Christ. This has the idea, brothers and sisters, of sounding forth intensely blasting forth it was not spoken of quietly or in a secret they literally shouted out the gospel message they didn't didn't hide it underneath the bushel they told the world that Jesus lived they they administered the gospel they sounded it I'm afraid brothers and sisters many of us are lacking in that area of administering uh, the gospel message it's not being sounded forth from the hearts of our lips. We have a, a solution uh, to a uh, to all of our varied problems of our day, but the, 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 but, but, but the world doesn't know because um, we have been keeping quiet. You want to know why Christianity is on a decline uh, rather than on the rise? It used to be the most uh, uh, prevalent and popular uh, 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 movement uh, in religion, but because uh, we are not uh, 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 sounding out. We're not crying out in the wilderness. We're not telling a dying world uh, that the wages of sin is death. We, we're, we're, we're sugar-coated. We've watered down our gospel. We'll tell folk that they don't need to do this, that, or that, or all they need to do is this. When the Bible says uh, that we have to come godless, sorrowful of our sins and repent and turn from our wickedness, that's why we're losing our uh, this battle is because um, we're not administering uh, the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. I feel like preaching today. Look again, because we, we not only see um, they're administering uh, the gospel, but listen, the gospel advanced because of their administering. Listen, the text, Paul speaks of the gospel being proclaimed in Macedonia and Archia. This is no small feat. When the Roman conquered Greece, the country, watch this, was divided into two providence, Macedonia to the north and Archia to the south. It was clear that the Thessalonian church had shared the gospel with all of Greece. They had proclaimed, the, 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 proclaimed Christ to the entire nation. That and in, that in, in itself, is a miraculous feat. They, the message was not confined to Greece, but also in every place where their faith in God was spread abroad. It was reaching the world for Christ. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, if you're not hugging your pillow and drifting away from me, well, it would be a it would be great if if we could it, if it could be said that we were reaching our community for Christ. It, it, it would be even greater if we were impacting Florida for Christ. Or our church would be very diligent and committed if we could honestly, honestly say we are reaching the USA. But, but what, are, what about reaching even the world? We can do it, y'all, by faith and a determined resolve we can reach our Jerusalem and the uttermost parts of, of this earth. The gospel must be circulated. Paul is inspired by the zeal of this church as they have done well with administering, watch this, and advancing the gospel that he, that, 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 that did it so well that now it, it met some approval. Watch this. I'm still in verse number eight. Paul declares, your faith, talking to the church at Thessalonians says your faith toward God, watch this, has gone out so that we do not need 
to say anything. Brother Harold, if you're still with me, um, this statement is a very profound statement by Paul. Don't miss this because this is not to say they didn't need preaching, uh, but the groundwork, yes, had already been laid in many places that Paul went. When he arrived in a new city, um, evangelists sent out from Thessalonica had already been there. They, they were reaching the world for Christ and Paul could focus now on helping them mature in their faith because they had already been saved. Listen, it would be wonderful, yes, y'all, my brothers and not my sisters, if we could leave that kind of legacy behind. They, 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 there will always be those who need to hear the gospel, but wouldn't it be great if we could lay the groundwork for the future generation, wouldn't it be great that our, the future good generation can look at us now and say they're doing mighty works because of the faith they have in God and they too pick up the mantle and run on and see what the ends are going to be? Let me hurry. Because not only do I see uh, or do I notice the circulation of the gospel, but now, the movement in the text in verse number nine, I see the confidence in the gospel. Here it is. Um, the text says, for they themselves declared concerning us what manner of entry we had to you, how you turned to God from idols to serving the living and true God. Watch this, Cousin Herb. Because we know this confidence because of the declaration. Watch this. Paul was amazed at what he encountered. It, it seemed as if uh, everywhere he went, he was hearing of the church at Thessalonica. He, he didn't have to take his time to share what the Lord had done for them. People already knew. What word had spread that God was working wonders in and through the church right there. Brother Woodard, their lives and testimony had so impacted the world that people everywhere knew of their faith. God, listen, was using them in a miraculous way. Listen, I, I don't know who is really listening to me at this point. But there ought to be a strong declaration of the power of the gospel from every blood-bought believer today. You, you ought to be a witness, a living, breathing witness about how good God has been in your life. You ought to tell somebody that you know what your past, you know better than they do. They may think they know your past, about, but you know it better than they do. And you know where the Lord has brought brought you from and you make a declaration every day of your life if it had not been yeah for the Lord who was on my side I, I couldn't get that degree if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side I couldn't raise my children if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side I would have been cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs I, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side I, I'll be dead sleeping in my grave but I praise God this morning uh, and I'm not afraid to tell somebody uh, that God uh, is still uh, in the saving uh, business. Not only do I see the declaration watch this y'all still with me um, Paul speaks about confidence because of their declaration as, as, as well as their here it is deliverance uh, uh, the text says, for they themselves declared concerning us what manner of entry we had to you. And watch this. And how you, talking to the church at Thessalonica, turned to God from idols to serving the living um, and true God. Watch this. Paul was well aware yeah, of the reason for their profound influence and their declaration. Those who knew about Thessalonica 
knew of the idolatry and the immorality that were prevalent in their town and in that day. This stood as a powerful testimony, yeah, to the grace and power of God. Yeah, he had delivered them from a, a life of idolatry to a life of worship offered to the, to, to the true and the living God. The Lord had taken people whom the world would have given no chance and, and transformed their lives for his glory and I don't know if you're listening to me but I'm getting ready to get happy all by myself because I, I understand the, the magnitude of the Lord's delivering power I understand that, yeah that God uh, is the only one that can do what he's done for many of us uh, down through the years what this a profound lesson nothing is impossible for God you know it nothing is impossible what the world seems to be seems to to think is impossible. God takes that which is unusable and, and he makes it usable. Come on, testify with me if you will. Shout if you will that you know that it was nobody but the Lord. You, Yeah, the world still reminds you. The world still puts it in front of your face up the, about your past but tell them uh, there ain't no secret. Huh? What God can do, huh? what he's done for others, uh, he'll do the same thing for you. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you ought to help me right through here as I hasten to my final point today and tell somebody, be a witness uh, that God is still uh, in the deliverance of business. I'm done. I noticed at least five things, Brother Vonte, relative to the gravity of the gospel. Here it is. We shared this certification. We shared the compliance. We shared the circulation, we shared the confidence. And finally, for those of you who are taking notes along with me, uh, we see the Christ of the gospel. That's the five C's of our text today. Uh, we see the Christ of the gospel. Verse 10, here it is, is what I want to show you. The Bible says, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivered us from the wrath to come. Listen, Paul knew what, the, this, what these, uh, this church had received. He, he knew that these, uh, as well as all who accept Jesus Christ, had received more than could be understood. Uh, when we accept Christ, we live with anticipation. Watch this, cousin. Um, those whom had received Christ was instructed to wait for the, for the son from heaven. They could anticipate, watch this, his return. And our blessed Lord left us with the promise Oh, uh, of, of, of the redeemed, he will come again and receive us unto himself. Uh, that where he is, uh, we may be also. Uh, we ought to live, yeah, every day in anticipation and full of expectation of our Lord's return. Uh, and I don't know if anybody has, has told you, but I, I'm here to remind you today that he's coming uh, again uh, one day uh, he's coming just uh, as he said he would i'm and i'm waiting y'all uh, in and am i waiting yeah in anticipation but i'm glad about the fact that i not only see anticipation but i
everybody under the sound of my voice I'm, that God is coming back. I'm anticipating him coming and standing on the cloud. I'm anticipating that I have a blessed assurance because he said, you may put me up in a tomb, but three days later, I'm going to rise again. And yeah, after the third day morning, just like he said he would, he got up with all power. I'm talking about Jesus now. All power in his hand. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I thank God for the Christ of the gospel. I thank God for the power that he has. I thank God for the ability he has because not only, brothers and sisters, that I wait in anticipation, not only do I, I, I bless God because of the assurance, but I thank him most of all because of his blood. Oh, that he shed it on Calvary. It gave me uh, his atoning uh, assurance. Uh, and that's what is, is more important uh, than anything else. Uh, that I have his atoning uh, assurance. Uh, because not everybody, uh, not anybody uh, can make it into heaven. Uh, or only those um, who's been washed um, in the blood of the Lamb. Uh, and that's all uh, I want to tell you all today. Uh, as I go to my seat, uh, you want to know uh, the significance. Uh, you really want to know the gravity of this gospel uh, is all uh, about Jesus the Christ uh, and what he's done for me. Uh, and I don't know uh, who I'm talking to, uh, but I stopped by today uh, to tell somebody but if you don't know him you get you need to get to know him you need to know that he's able to pick you up and to turn you around you need to know how he's able to dip your sin sick soul your dark soul up in blood and you come out as white as snow you need to know how that he's coming back again and he's coming up back for the pure in heart. I, I don't know how, who I'm talking to, I, but I want to know today, I, is there anybody I, under the sound of my voice I, knows my Jesus? I, is there anybody I, knows I, how powerful he is? I, how he is I, so great in our lives? I, if you know how and you're not ashamed, I, could you do me one thing I, as I sign off today? I, can you shout, yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got all power in his hand. And we need to understand the gravity of the gospel. It's all wrapped around Jesus, our Christ, our risen Savior. 